is our nutritionist, and I'm just really excited for you to meet her and just hear all this wisdom that she has and how she can help you. So we are going to talk about bloating, and I am actually looking to see. Oh, guess what? I think I can share it in my group. Nope, it's not going to let me. Okay, so that's okay. <laughs> So why is diastasis such an issue or why is bloating such an issue with diastasis? And the, and the reason is, is when you're dealing with diastasis, you have no protection. So that linea alba tissue is so thin um, that it, it runs down the middle of your abdominal walls and it's so thin. And then your muscles are also kind of, they've just come, come apart, right? So they've separated. And when you have bloating, you have no protection anymore. So those are some of the issues that you deal with. And it's important to get the bloating down. So, so many women that I know um, deal with bloating even more. And it makes your tummy just feel so much bigger. And some of you may have a flat tummy in the morning. And by the evening, you may be dealing with even a more bloaty tummy. So uh, that's a really great indicator. You've got to get that bloat under control as well with some things that Nancy's going to talk about. So um, ask any questions if you join us live. If you're on the replay, you can post in the comments and we will answer them as well. Um, so Nancy, what causes bloating? There are so many things. Like you said, it's <laughs> the, mo the most common GI symptom and and very high highest rates in women, like you said, from the hormones. But when I think of bloating, I think of gas, <laughs> constipation, mm -hmm. and overeating at Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> so, but one thing that um, most people forget about or don't even know about is that bacteria has a big effect on our gut health are um, on bloating, so even good or bad bacteria. Um, so uh, that is one thing that you really have to take in consideration. A fun fact is that scientists have discovered hundreds of species of bacteria in our gut, and we're actually more considered more bacteria than human. Wow. Than we are. <laughs> and, DNA terms, like we're more bacteria. So it's a huge, huge thing to our health and really, really has to do with bloating. So one of the causes, there's abnormal gut, microflora, and intestinal gas production. Okay. And so we're talking about carbohydrate fermentation here. And I, I remember telling you the story of when I ate a breakfast of fruit mixed with a protein, and I immediately got this puffy, bloated stomach. I call it po poofy belly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I told you the story of uh, when I ate a fruit with the protein. Yes. Yeah. And so what that is, is the fruit is actually fermenting in your gut. Mm. It's actually causing excess gas, um, like the bacteria is putting off a gas in your stomach and so that can cause major bloating and we'll talk about that definitely in the boot camp uh, food combinations but uh, the second um, who would have thought that you know what I mean that's crazy <laughs> yeah, like so many people do this and and I and I didn't even know until I it came to my attention that I just mixed fruit with a protein and it, it caused huge bloating. And so I'm avoiding that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so food but, combinations can be a big thing then. Yes. Yeah, so that's what we'll be talking about in the boot camp a lot are certain food combos um, that um, that should not be mixed together or should be eaten only alone to help prevent excess bloating. Okay. Um, but another thing that affects, it's not just the gas accumulation, but the transit time in, or altered gut motility. So uh, think of constipation when you think of transit time. Um, okay. So most, most of us are eating a, a sad diet. 
is the standard American diet. Uh, processed food, high sugar, low in fiber, and that that has a lot to do with constipation and even um, abdominal dis distension on top of the bloating. So um, where there's bacterial fermentation going on. So and Olivia's talked about that the di abdominal distension and the dangers of it uh, with diastasis, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and so get this, there, this, this is really interesting, Olivia. The cause, well, another cause is abnormal diaphragmatic reflexes. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So <laughs> that really rang a bell with me because constantly talking about diaphragm, diaphragm breathing. Diaphragm, <laughs> diaphragm breathing, diaphragm breathing. Okay. So this, this has to do with shifting the abdominal cavity. And, and I've even heard you talk about, <clears throat> is it called um, lumbar lordosis? Lordosis, uh-huh. Uh, and so that's where it um, can even push on the pelvic cavity. And yeah, absolutely. There. So, um, and so people with bloating have shown diaphragmatic contraction mm -hmm. or descent, descent. So okay. I don't really know what that means on your end, but those two are connected, uh, diaphragmatic contraction and descent. And then also a relaxa relaxation of the internal oblique muscles. Okay. So, so that, diaphragm breathing is important. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So getting that diaphragm breathing. So see, it's not just, so diaphragm breathing is not just about um, getting your, I mean, diastasis heal. Diaphragmatic breathing, I'm telling you what, there are so many benefits of it. Even just, it's also getting the nutrients in our body, even with that breathing. It's, it's crazy. So definitely don't skip this when you know I say learn how to breathe with your diaphragm it's just a big thing and so now you know it can also help with the bloating issues yes and so another thing that we'll t touch base on um, in the private boot camp and in even individually um, the food intolerances that people have I want to um, speak with everyone with their um, you know, certain food triggers that they have and making sure that uh, we are looking at each food that they're eating and making sure it's not a bloat trigger is what we'll call it. Yes. Make sure they're avoiding highly fermentable foods and all the, the gassy foods that they may uh, be dealing with. But so that that is a big part of... Um, the nutrition side of the diastasis fix. Diastasis. What are some of the what are some of the big food triggers that people could just avoid even just right now when you're telling them what are some of the ones that are biggies? Just, well, I wouldn't say forever because these foods are really really good for you, but um, the cruciferous vegetables. If we're going to be doing a de-bloat, you kind of want to avoid cruciferous vegetables, which okay. would be like the broccoli family. Okay. And so those are very healthy foods. Don't, don't, right. get, but when you're trying to give your um, gut a break <laughs> and just really de bloat, that would, that would help a lot. Um, and so, and some of the highly commercial foods would be like the uh, fruit, um, with the quick transit time and things like that, high processed foods and sugars. Um, but I wanted to go over the next aspect, which Olivia is really well at um, helping, uh, really good at helping us with that is the psychological aspect of bloating. And there's, I mean, it's, it's connected to stress and anxiety and even our sleep patterns. And I didn't know if you wanted to put anything with that, Olivia. Yeah, because if you are, a lot of people don't understand that stress can cause a bloating. And most of us in society, we are stressed somehow. So 
um, our cortisol levels need to lower. So for stress and we're not sleeping, our cortisol levels rise and that really does affect our belly fat and the bloating that's going on. So learning how to go through some de-stressing techniques, learning how to do some getting your sleep just down, you know, some things that you can do, you know, to sleep is keep your TV screens off at night, you know, take relaxing baths, make sure no lights are on in your room, go to sleep at the same time every night. That's going to really help your body get used to. And I know some of us are moms and it's really hard with little ones. So we just do the best we can. And if we need to nap when they nap, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and uh, cause we, then guess what? We're all stressed. Oh, I've got to get this house done or I've got to get this done or whatever, but we really do need to relax and take care of our bodies and nap when those babies nap. If you're, if you have little ones and, um, just, you know, put into your program, <laughs> whatever you're doing for your workout or whatever, add in relaxation into your program, whether it's, getting a massage, taking lavender essential oil bath, um, going for walks, long leisurely walks, not out there going, oh, I'm going to burn these calories, you know, as you're walking, because that actually long leisure, long leisurely walks actually helps you to lower your cortisol levels. So those are some things that um, you really need to look at. Um, some other things that, okay, Real quick, Cassandra said, is cabbage in the broccoli family? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cabbage. Is that? I would think, yeah, I would call that uh, a gassy food. (laughs) Yeah. So that is one that you would want to eliminate. And then um, how about meat? Does it cause bloating? That's what she wants to know. Meat, um, high fatty foods. High fat meat could cause um, bloating, so you really want to get good quality grass-fed uh, meat, red meats for sure. Um, okay. But that's another thing we'll talk about is co- combining it with certain foods can definitely cause bloating. Um, and so what would be uh, an example of something when you combine something that's going to make you bloat? I call that the um, stick to your ribs <laughs> meal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is like mashed potatoes and a steak. So combining it with that starchy potato, it's really, that's really is what going to, it's going to cause bloating, excess bloating, just because your, um, your enzymes in your stomach are competing with each other because a starch and a protein digest at different times or or use different um, enzymes as well. So there'll be a competitive enzyme breakdown going on and that can cause um, bloating as well. Okay. So if you see people who uh, clean eating, they say, I've got my diet down and I'm, you know, I'm having clean eating, but there are foods that are still causing me bloating and I'm doing this. What would you say? Would you say, you know, you've got to look at them on an individual basis. I know that. Um, But I guess it could be the combinations of food that's going on or even. Yeah, I mean, are definitely healthy foods. I mean, I just got done doing Whole30 and I and I was noticing bloating, noticing that I was bloating. And it wasn't that I was eating processed foods or, um, you know, things like that, unhealthy items. But it was the food combination that I noticed right. or it was a certain type of food that I was eating, such as the broccoli, things like that. But, um, yeah, we'll definitely look at individualized um, eating plans or food diaries is what we'll call it and make sure that there aren't any triggers causing uh, excess bloating. Right. And so Sandra said, please don't say white rice and chicken is a bad combo. (laughs) You eat that a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we'll look at. So is that one a bad one for you to do? (laughs) (laughs) And uh, well, so that would be a starch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want to make starches with um, with a protein you want to eat. You can pretty much eat anything with a green or a vegetable, um, a non-starchy 
starchy vegetables. So let's say you want to eat chicken fried rice. Um, you want to just go for the vegetable fried rice okay. <laughs> instead of mixing in the chicken or, or you want to have vegetables and chicken. Does that make sense? Yes, that does make sense. Now, does that, do you think this is going to apply to everybody or you think everybody's going to be individual? Do you think some people will be able to do the chicken and right? That's where the journaling comes in. Yes. And yeah. saying, mm -hmm, and, and yes. And if it uh, affects or not, we'll, um, we'll just, we'll add that in. It's definitely going to be diet as tolerated. Um, we'll okay. Be diet as tolerated. Yeah. What do you think about, so, when you're saying, okay, these foods are healthy and we're going to add them back in. Eventually, how do you add them back in? Oh, that's <laughs> a hard one. <laughs> I, would, I would just, you know, when I got done with Whole30, there is a certain way to do it. Um, so I would kind of take that approach of, you know, not just adding everything back in. You don't want to add in, um, you know, maybe whole grains really fast, but I would, I would add in, um, the vegetables first and, okay. and maybe test the food combo combos. Um, you know, and it's not, it's not a forever thing. There are times where we'll have to eat, um, rice and chicken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When we're healing, um, it's very important to, to try to do everything we can to reduce the excess bloat. So it makes it easier to come back together, to get stronger, healing our body. So that's what I like. I like what you just said. When you're healing your body, you got to look at this time as you are going through a healing process. And it's not about perfection. Okay. It's not about perfection. It's just about, you know, progress. It's about just trying to be as consistent as you can. Um, because I know some of this seems like, oh, my gosh, how can I do all of this? Right. So that's why um, I brought Dancy on my team, because you can look at all this and be like, oh, my gosh, can't do this, can't do that. But some of these things may not make you bloat and it may make other people bloat. That's what I found. I mean, we've talked about um, you said overeating, OK, slowing down your eating. Um, would you say that just slowing down your eating can help the bloating, too? instead of scarfing all your food down? Oh yes, there's, I mean, just chewing, just chewing is um, the first step of digestion and mm -hmm. making sure we're chewing enough. And then also not swallowing air, swallowing air as we're chewing. We just, and then the stress of it, it's all, it's all uh, combined with bloating. So you don't want to be in a rush or stressed out while you're eating because it, that, that does something with the bacteria in your gut, um, stress does. So it's all connected. <laughs> so I'm going to raise my hand here because I am a scarf your food down eater and I have been working on it because <laughs> I grew up with my dad saying, if you're with me, you better hurry. So my mom always eats her food so slow and I'm always thinking, Oh Lord, we're never getting out of here. We're never getting out of here. And I eat so fast that I've really been taking the time now I actually take diaphragmatic breaths in between my bites and I roll my food around on my tongue to taste it and to pay attention to the flavors. Because if we scarf our food down, our brain can tell you, I don't even remember eating, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and then you're hungry again and you want to eat again. So um, just taking time with your meal and enjoying it as much as you can taking, and we've already learned that diaphragmatic breathing can help. So, um, breathing while you eat and just trying to enjoy your meal. And that's something I'm learning. Some other things that I think, you know, Dancy and I talked about with bloating is drinking through a straw, right? You said this and I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah, you can, you can have trapped air and then actually get some air. And um, and even timing when you drink is a big one for bloating. I know with my husband, like, he's always drinking water with a meal, and I'm always drinking it before or after a meal to, to actually help with bloating. Um, 
Is that because the water actually will slow down your digestion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Because yeah. it, it dilutes the digestive juices. Yeah. Yeah. I do that. I do. I do do that. <laughs> That's why I don't know why I, I've always drank after I've eaten or before. And people are like, how are you not drinking any water at a restaurant? <laughs> like, <laughs> waitress never has to come in or, you know, come and fill up my water because I don't drink it while I'm eating. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and that I do that too. So, um, and something else I did want to talk about that a lot of people don't think of is gum, sugar free gum with the aspartame and other sugar-free things, those things can cause some bloating as well. Oh yeah, they have, um, <clears throat> uh, they're, I think they're called, or they're a big, uh, they're sugar in them, like sorbitol, aspartame. And what happens with those is that, that ends up not being digested in your small intestine like it should. And so it gets down to your large intestines and then causes major Fermentation, which which means oh. the gas, um, again, the gas again. <laughs> so that's crazy, you know. Just to, what it, Cassandra's sitting here saying. What did she say here? My diet has changed significantly since I moved in with my parents and my brother's family. And these past two nights, mm -hmm. especially, I've had horrible bloating, especially at night. It's even hard to sleep. Oh, I'm so sorry. Could this be the rice and chicken, LOL, amongst other things? Well, uh, I mean, stress too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> food, stress, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely could be. Um, so that's where you could even make a note to yourself um, with you can even do your own food diary for a little bit on uh, what are some of the food triggers or the bloat triggers for you. Um, and that, that one very well, well, very well may be one. Yeah, it definitely might be one. And then um, just learning how to uh, pay attention. I mean, if you are someplace that, that this is what you have to eat because everybody's situation is different. You know, there's other, you know, maybe try to lower your stress level. Uh, we are in control of our stress level. We can, we can be in situations I know that can be stressful, but we actually get to choose our thoughts. We actually get to choose what we think about this. If we can change our thoughts about situations, it can help our stress level. Um, taking time to do breathing, taking time to chew your food more, um, even if it's not the best combinations and, and breathing, not using straws. I think, you know, all that's going to be better than not doing any of it. So, oh, yeah, Definitely. yeah, that's what that's what I think. Um, oh, so yeah. I, was, I had taken notes. Is there anything else, Nancy, that you wanted to add? Um, I would just add um, some of my favorite treatments that I do for myself. It's dietary interventions are a big one, but I also have to take probiotics for this for um, when I can't perfectly eat perfect. <laughs> and yes. so is a, that is a big lifesaver for me. And then also stress management. I love Olivia was at some salt lavender baths all the time. I'll have to go on walks and um, uh, really just uh, meditate and make sure that my mind is in the place. Stress management is a huge one. Like it's probably equal, if not more, with the dietary interventions. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And it's hard to get people to understand that, that mindset stress because actually one of the number one causes of diseases is stress. It creates inflammation in our bodies. And if we can get that lower, Nancy's so right about that. I think it's probably top. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I can say this from experience from my husband, we are total opposites. He eats awful. He eats awful. He does not like vegetables. I mean, it's pretty hilarious in our family because I'm all about health and he's just like, nah. <laughs> you know, he doesn't even work out, but he's wonderful. I love him to pieces. And, but he is so chill. 
and so relaxed and he's not stressed and he's hardly ever sick. The guy is hardly ever sick or and deals with stuff. So his stress level and his emotions there, I mean, not saying don't do the diet. Okay. But getting all of this, I just want y'all to understand that that's important. And really most people are always all, well, I need to do this. I need to eat. I need to work out. And I need to do this. And, you know, and then you get stressed about that. So what, you know, learning how to lower that stress levels is going to be important. That's a really great point. <laughs> I just your properly if you're, um, if you're stressed out. So right. If you're being healthy and you're stressed, it really, it really is you're going nowhere. <laughs> I have heard that people have said, if you are stressed, you should not be eating. <laughs> so I read a book. If you are like in a high stress, you should not eat. Your food is not going to digest. It's just not going to do you any good. It doesn't. Yeah. But that's yeah, if we're in fight or flight mode, your your digestive system is on a halt and that's where a lot of digestive issues can go on. Yeah. From that's crazy. That, it's the number one on my list too. <laughs> well, I, I know, me too. And it takes practice. It takes because we can know it. But until we actually do it and try to do something about it, it's not going to change. Um, so it does take yeah. effort. Yeah, and and we'll, we'll be going over that boot camp, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be the big thing about this new structure. I'm like Bean Burger and Quino for dinner, dear, and he's like, uh huh, yeah. <laughs> well, my husband doesn't like any vegetables. He likes mashed potatoes and corn. If you want to call those vegetables, <laughs> I'll eat whatever I put in front of him. But he'd rather go for the <laughs> the other the stuff, unhealthy, the mashed potatoes and and whatever it is. <laughs> but, well, but go ahead. He's chill too. He's chill too, like um, dusty, and so I guess he's got a good um, gut microflora. <laughs> Yes, and you know, dusty too. <laughs> <clears throat> I know sometimes you cut out, Dancy. I'm like, I'm hoping just oh. a little bit, and I don't know if it's um, maybe it's when I'm talking. I hear your voice kind of um, making different noises, but you always come back on. Hopefully, okay, yeah, so do you. Okay. So, who else said so? My husband doesn't eat vegetables either. Yay, so we're not in the salon. Yay. <laughs> Isn't that hard as wives to to be wanting to prepare healthy meals and then <laughs> not everyone in the family will eat them? <laughs> yes, I look at it and go, it would be so, I'm looking at my, I'm a cookbook reader. And I'm looking at him going, oh, this would be so lovely if he could do this. But he will not. <laughs> so I just think, you know, I make it for me and you can make big portions and then have it for lunch or have it for dinner or have it for breakfast. I'm one of those people who I don't have to necessarily have breakfast for breakfast. I can eat my leftovers for breakfast. So um, and that's really good, too. I'm a big leftover eater. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. But well, ladies, I'm so glad y'all were here. If you were dealing with diastasis and you need some clarity on the next steps that you want to take, you can hop on a call with me or my team and we can help tell you the next steps that you need to take. And also, if you would like to work with us to see if maybe you're a good fit for us and we're a good fit for you, you can go to oliviacagle.com forward slash apply, A-P-P-L-Y. And I really don't know if I can post. Um, I'm sure I can maybe... Here we go. I'm going to do Olivia Cagle forward slash apply. Hey, I'm learning this new technology here and see if this works. And then I can say show, I think. We'll see. But uh, yes, so. Okay. All right. So what you see it? Okay. Yay. Okay. So what we're going to do, and the reason why Dancy's come on board too, she's. What I've learned after working with hundreds of women is each one is unique. You're, you're all different. You're all unique. You all need different things. So what makes your body different 
and bloat is not going to be the same as what's going to make my I body bloat. You. I missed you. And so she you. is actually going to go over food journaling with you and you get to go over with her what you've eaten for the week and she'll look through it and give you recommendations. And so I'm so glad you're here, Nancy. <laughs> and I'm here. It's been a pleasure. And I'm, uh, we're going to do some more of these lives on different topics. So just stay tuned. Yes. All right. So y'all have a great day. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.